Hello all and be welcome to this new video tutorial and just so you know I'm trying to configure an analog line and I have an analog call coming from this phone and I will try to hang it up and let's see what happens. So I hang up the call and the call keeps there. It's not disconnecting. So why is that? Well, to really solve that and other issues that may occur at the moment you install your analog lines, I would suggest to watch this video as we will go into details in regard to how to configure your UCM and other recommendations that you will find useful at the moment you install your analog trunks. So please enjoy. When configuring analog trunks, we must take into account that the Grandstream UCM IPPBX must be the one that needs to be adapted to the POTS line that will be connected to the FX support of the IPPBX. Thus, the UCM IPPBX has a PSTN line detection feature that helps to facilitate the user configuration and make the installation more efficient. At the moment we configure an analog trunk in the UCM IPPBX, we need to make sure that the POTS line is directly connected to the FX support of the IPPBX. Then we will have to add a new analog trunk, which consists on only select the FX supports that we are going to use and give a name to it. This step is very important because we need to make sure that the analog trunk is configured in order to check if the FX supports are really connected. As you can see here, when the analog trunk is not configured, the FX support will be connected but not configured. After we configure the analog trunk, we can see here that the FX support is now idle. In the vast majority of cases, this should be just enough to run an analog trunk in our IPPBX. However, there might be incidents that may occur at the moment we install the analog lines, which we are going to discuss throughout the video. A recommended procedure to perform when configuring analog trunks is to run an ACIM detection to detect the impedance levels of the PSTN lines. For that, we need to go to our IPPBX settings, then under PBX settings, interface settings, FX supports options, we need to run here the ACIM detection. Make sure that when you do any type of analog detection, there are no active calls. If not, the detection won't be executed. We need to be patient as this process will take up to two minutes. Just to confirm here, I only have port one and port two connected, so please don't hesitate if you see that from FX03 to FX08, there is no connection. After the detection is done, make sure to save any changes that you see under the impedance levels. The purpose of the ACIM detection is to prevent echo on the line. So before you do any other type of detection or adjustments on the analog trunk, make sure you do this first at the moment you install your analog trunks. One of the most common issues that may happen at the moment you configure an analog trunk is when the call is not disconnected when the remote end over the PSTN line tries to disconnect the call. The PSTN line provider will try to disconnect the call using busy tones, current disconnection or polarity reversal. The UCM by default will try to disconnect the call using the US standard PC tones or current disconnection. If this doesn't work, you need to do a PSTN line detection. So when we go there, we will find two types of detection, the automatic detection and the semi-automatic detection. The automatic detection consists of a call coming from one of the FXO ports of the UCM going to another FXO port. This way, the UCM will disconnect the call from one of the FXO ports and receive a disconnection method that the PSTN line provider is using on the other FXO port that the UCM has as destination, so the UCM will automatically apply the settings without human intervention. The semi-automatic method consists of making the call from a single FXO port to destination number reachable from the PSTN line, for example, your telephone. When you do the automatic detection, we need to make sure we set here the number of the FX support that is already connected to the UCM. And when you do the semi-automatic detection, you need to follow some steps. So we recommend the telephone number as destination number. In case you would like to manually check the disconnection method that is coming from your PSTN line provider, you will need to have an analog record trace. And this can be done under maintenance, signal in troubleshooting, select the FX supports that will monitor, and start. When the issue is totally recorded, you can stop here, then download the file, and you will receive a new file that will contain raw or PCM files depending on the UCM model that you have that needs to be scanned by a third-party application. For this video, we're going to use Velocity in order to check the audio of the call. In order to import the file into Velocity, we need to go to File, then Import, then Raw Data. Here, we will find three files when we extract the files from the one that we downloaded from the PBX at the moment we did the analog record trace. As we did the analog record trace in a UCM63 series, it separates the audio in three files. 
this one for transmission, this one for reception, and this one for a mix of both. As we are only interested for the reception, we just need this file in order to check the PC tone. And next, we need to configure the parameters of the audio file. For encoding, we are going to keep it assigned 16 bits PCM, channels needs to be just one, and sample rate needs to be 8000. We click on import, and right here we have the audio file. As, as you can see, all of this is the PC tone. Now, how do we do to analyze a PC tone? Well, we just need to select one of it, for example, this one, then analyze, plot the spectrum, and we need to find peaks. In this case, we have two peaks. Audacity will let us know what is the frequency of that peak and also the amplitude of it. In this case, we have a first peak of 480 Hz as frequency and minus 32 as amplitude. And for the second peak, we have a frequency of 620 Hz and minus 32 as amplitude. Now, in order to calculate the cadence of the VC tone, we need to zoom in a little and we need to calculate the spaces between tones and also the length of the tone. For that, I would recommend to choose this option here as a start and length of selection and then start to calculate here to measure. We need to measure the space between tones, which is almost 500, as you can see here below. And then let's calculate the tone. And it's almost 500 as well. So the cadence should be something like 500, 500, 500 on, 500 off. Good. Now that we have the frequency of the peaks, also the amplitude and the cadence between tones, we can calculate the BC tone formula as the one as you will see on the screen. As you can see, it's almost the same as the one that the UCM detected when we did the semi-automatic detection. And that was a way to manually calculate the Visiton formula with Audacity. However, as it seems difficult, you don't have to actually do that because the UCM already offers these connection detection methods that provide accurate results. Also, we need to clarify here, these connection methods are regularized by countries and regions. So if you already tried your country and that didn't work, then I would suggest to use the PSTN detection. Another common issue is when we don't receive calls when you see that the line is actually busy and inbound routes are properly configured. What could happen is that the call is coming with no caller ID tone and the Grand Steering UCM IPPBX by default expects to receive the caller ID tone in order to allow us to receive the call at the proper destination. The caller ID tone should be similar to this. In that case, you must verify with your PSTM provider on whether they give you caller ID. Or a simple way to test that, simple and easy, is with an analog phone with LCD screen and directly connected to the PSTN line. That way you will find if you receive caller ID or not. If you don't receive caller ID from the PSTN line, I would suggest to disable the option use caller ID that you will find at the analog trunks page. But if you were able to see caller ID from the analog phone when you did the test, then I would suggest to change the caller ID scheme to Auro in case you don't know what it is and it is different from Belcore. And if that doesn't continue to work, you will need to verify the status of the line by running an analog record trace. So you will see whether the caller ID tone is suffering from noise, echo, or whether it's not received correctly. Another issue that could happen will be related to the volume of the reception audio. In case that it is too faint, the UCM won't be able to detect if it is a busy tone or if it is a color ID tone. In that case, there are some settings that we could adjust on the analog trunk settings that could help us to prevent that. Under the analog trunks page, we have reception gainance and transmission gainance. Here, we will have the ability to increase or decrease the audio reception or transmission of the analog line. In case we have to increase the audio of reception to allow the UCM to detect busy tones or color ID tones, our recommendation is to increase little by little these options from 0 to 12, 12 being the maximum. And our last recommendation is to always ground our IPPBXs and that can be done by using the ground screw that is here, which will allow us to dissipate current induced by electrical equipment in contact with the UCM, which could cause problems related to noise or in worst cases, irreversible damage to the FXO ports. And this was all for today's video tutorial. I hope you guys like it and found it useful. If you have any questions related to this topic, please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. I also will try to read you and answer properly. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.